And so, hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever, um, wherever you are. Uh, this is Richard Hart from the Homeschool Freedom Club, and we are going to run a goal setting workshop today. I know January is sort of traditionally the time of year that people tend to do this stuff. Um, but I would, you know, I would say that we should, you know, if we've got goals to attain, we should start at any time of the year. You shouldn't wait for an arbitrary date in the diary to, um, to start, start setting them. So, yeah, do have something to hand. Um, if you're watching the recording, you'll need uh, a pen or pencil and a notebook because we will do some little exercises in here. So these are the objectives of the workshop today. Um, we want to help you understand why goal setting is important. Um, to help you define your goals and to learn some practical strategies for actually achieving those goals. And what we're going to look at today is why do goals matter? Um, what is your why? That's, that's a really important one actually and something that quite often gets overlooked when people are setting goals. Um, we'll look at smart goals, we'll do a goal setting exercise, we'll look at in integrating your goals, the so different um, goals from different areas, how to integrate them, um, we'll look at overcoming obstacles as well because there's plenty of those in your way, um, not least of them being procrastination, which I'm pretty expert at. Uh, we'll look at the importance of celebrating and then I'll also have some resources for you at the end. Now a copy of the notes from this will be available as well, um, so don't, you know, don't worry too much if you're struggling to write everything down as we go through. So why do goals matter? Um, well setting personal goals, it positively impacts your overall well-being. There are a number of studies on this, none of which I've read, but the, to be fair, it is a pretty well-known fact that um, they provide a sense of direction and purpose. Um, setting goals, uh, they, it enhances motivation, uh, it fosters resilience in the face of challenges, and it does contribute to a balanced and fulfilling life. Um, now, achieving personal goals promotes a sense of accomplishment, it boosts self-esteem and mental health, and also creates a positive ripple effect on various aspects of your overall well-being. So, you know, goal setting is actually it's quite a fundamentally important thing for human beings. Now, something that's quite often overlooked is what is your why? You know, why are you looking to attain these goals? Um, because, all right, say you've got a health goal, you want to lose weight. OK, you want to get fit. OK, but is there, is there another reason why you're wanting to? do this is it not just for your sort of your personal satisfaction you know maybe you want to lose a bunch of weight because you want to be more active with your children um, maybe you want to earn more money because you're sick of being in lack and you want to give your partner nice things you want to give your kids nice things and they always say your why should make you cry so you know this is something to to consider um, write it down so write your why down have a good think about it and write it down Put it somewhere you can see it and and read it every day. Um, I mean, for me, you know, my family is my why. Um, it's why I get out of bed in the mornings. It's why I, I go and try and earn money um, because I want to give them the very best I can in life. I want to give them everything I feel they deserve. And, you know, this is why I, I go for a lot of my, my personal goals. Um, I mean, yes, there is personal satisfaction. You know, if, if you if you lose weight or you you um, hit another goal, then it's fantastic for you personally. But there there are usually overarching reasons as to why you want to hit these goals. So do think about those, and do write them down, and do put them somewhere you can see them and read them every single day. Now, a lot of people get into trouble with with setting goals because they're just don't set them specifically enough, okay? That you, people use very general terms like, I want to lose weight, I want to make more money, I wish my relationships were better. Um, and what we're gonna look at here is just a little system called the SMART system, which I'm sure a few of you have heard of, and it's fairly well known, but we'll go through it here because it is actually really valuable in terms of goal setting. So the S stands for specific. So you want to clearly define what you want to achieve. Be precise, avoid vague language. Um, ask yourself the five W questions. What, why, who, where, which. And this sets a clear direction for your goal. So an example would be instead of exercise more, you would specify, I want to jog for 30 minutes three times a week. Now, you won't catch me running. I hate running, but you know, fit this to your goal. The M, uh, measurable. So goals need to be quantifiable. They need to allow you to track progress. 
and to determine when you've successfully achieved the objective and you need to include concrete criteria to measure your success. So again, another example, instead of save money, you could specify, I want to save £100 a month. Um, achievable. So ensure that your goal is realistic and attainable. Now it's really great to aim high, but setting unattainable goals can lead to a lot of frustration. So you need to assess your resources, your skills, and the time you've got to determine the feasibility of your goals. So an example might be, um, instead of lose 20 pounds in a week, you know, set a more achievable goal, like lose one to two pounds per week. Um, relevant, um, so I put the wrong word there, I'm gonna put realistic, relevant. So your, your goal should be aligned with your broader objectives and values. Um, you need to ensure that the goal is meaningful and that it contributes to your overall vision. It should be relevant to your current priorities and aspirations. That should be relevant, not realistic. So um, instead of a random goal, just set one that aligns with your broad objectives, um, which might be um, read two books per month to enhance knowledge that I want to acquire in a certain field. Let's see, that's just joining. And then the T is time bound. So it's really important to establish a specific time frame for achieving your goal. This adds a sense of urgency. It helps to prevent procrastination, maybe. Um, and it also helps in tracking progress and staying accountable. So instead of an open-ended goal, set a time frame like um, complete a 30-day yoga challenge, for example. So applying SMART criteria, it enhances the effectiveness of goal setting by providing a clear structure and focus. Um, and it doesn't matter whether you apply it to personal, professional or academic goals. The SMART framework, it serves as a practical guide for creating objectives that are specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time-bound. So I'm gonna give some examples of goals now. So a non-SMART goal would be, I want to get fit. An example of a SMART goal would be, I will jog for 30 minutes three times a week over the next three months, gradually increasing my pace. By the end of this period, I aim to run five kilometers without stopping, improving my overall cardiovascular health and endurance. And we'll look at how that fits into the SMART framework. So you're being specific, jogging for 30 minutes, three times a week, and gradually increasing pace. Um, it's measurable. You're tracking progress to increase running distance and improve cardiovascular health. It's achievable. You know, it's a realistic target uh, of running five kilometers within three months. Or maybe it's not. So maybe for you, it might be three kilometers or 10 kilometers, you know? Um, it's relevant, so it aligns the goal with the broader objective of improving overall health and endurance. And it's time bound, so it establishes a specific time frame of three months for achieving the goal. So here's another example of a non-smart goal in relationships. I'm going to sort of look around health relationships and finances because they tend to be the three areas that are sort of non-professional goals that people tend to want to improve their lives in. So I want to improve my relationship with my partner. Okay, again, it's fairly kind of nebulous. Okay, great, but it doesn't really say anything. So an example of a smart goal would be over the next two months, my partner and I will dedicate at least one evening per week for quality time together, engaging in activities we both enjoy. We will actively communicate and address any concerns or conflicts that arise, working towards a more open and supportive relationship. Additionally, we'll attend a relationship building workshop together to enhance our communication skills and strengthen our bond. And again, this is how they fit into the, uh, the SMART framework. So allocating at least one evening a week for quality time, and attending a relationship building workshop. That's the specific part. Um, measurable is tracking the frequency of dedicated time together, engaging the impact of the workshop on communication skills. Um, achievable, so setting realistic commitments for weekly activities and choosing a specific time frame for the workshop. Uh, relevant, so aligning the goal with the broader objective of improving the relationship through quality time and enhanced communication. And it's time bound, so it's establishing a specific time frame of two months for achieving the goal. And just one last example of a smart goal on the financial side of things. So I want to save money. Again, you know, laudable goal, <laughs> but um, it doesn't really say much, does it? So an example of a smart goal would be, 
Over the next six months, I will create a monthly budget that allocates a specific percentage of my income to savings. I aim to save $3,000 within this time frame by cutting unnecessary expenses, identifying additional income streams, and consistently adhering to the budget. I will also set up an emergency fund equivalent to three months worth of living expenses to ensure financial security. So again, you know, it gets specific, creating a monthly budget with a specific percentage dedicated to savings, aiming to save $3,000 and establish a three month emergency fund. Um, it's measurable. So tracking progress through regular budget assessments, savings accounts balance, and the completion of the emergency fund. Um, it's achievable. So it's, you know, again, it, this would be relative to your goals, but setting a realistic savings target, um, identifying actionable steps like expense reduction and exploring additional income sources. Um, it's relevant. So aligning the goal with the broader objective of financial stability and security through saving and emergency fund creation. And it's time bound, it's establishing a specific time frame for achieving the goal. So you kind of get the picture here. So when you define your goals, you know, and again, it depends what areas your, your goals are in, but you'll want different criteria. So, you know, setting personal health goals, um, they're really crucial for fostering self-discipline, motivation. Um, you know, they help you create a, a roadmap for progress and just ultimately ensure a healthier and happier lifestyle. Um, but setting goals empowers individuals to take control of their well-being um, and just provides a bit of a sense of purpose as they sort of go on this health journey. So um, when you're defining your health goals, so reflect on your priorities, you know, identify what aspects of your health are most important to you, um, whether it's physical fitness, mental well-being or specific habits. Um, be specific. So clearly define your goals instead of a vague aim like exercise more, like we talked about before, set a specific target like jog for 30 minutes three times a week or go swimming twice a week or, you know, whatever that may be. Um, set realistic targets, so ensure your goals are achievable. If you set realistic milestones, it will help you to maintain your motivation and it will help you stop getting frustrated because there's nothing worse than setting goals that you just can't get to and there's no way you're ever going to get to them. Um, break your goals down. So if you have got larger goals, divide them into smaller, more manageable tasks. And this makes the process less overwhelming and allows for a sense of accomplishment along the way as well. Again, set a timeline, establish a time frame for achieving your goals. Uh, this adds a sense of urgency and it also helps you to track progress a bit more effectively. Measure your progress. So make sure you choose measurable indicators to track your success. So whether it's pounds lost, hours slept, daily steps, but you need you know, a tangible metric and it helps to keep you accountable. And you know, review your progress and adjust as needed. So just regularly evaluate your progress, reassess your goals, and then adjust them based on your evolving priorities because things do change in life, you know, we all know that, um, to ensure that they align with your changing needs and aspirations. So if you're looking to set relationship goals, okay, then, you know, again, these provide a bit of a roadmap for mutual growth. Um, they help to sponsor uh, communication and a shared sense of purpose. And it also ensures that both partners actively contribute to the relationship success. So it just promotes a bit of a deeper connection and again, more resilience in the face of challenges. So reflection and communication, okay, have an open and honest conversation with your partner about your individual values, priorities and aspirations. Reflect on what each of you envisions for the relationship. And again, this is, you know, these, these are just suggestions, um, but just something to help you um, have a bit of a framework when you're trying to set your goals. Um, identify common goals. So identify shared values and goals that are important to both of you. Now, this could include areas such as uh, communication, quality time, future plans or personal growth make sure to prioritize your goals. So once you've identified your common goals, prioritize them based on their importance to both of you. Um, this helps in focusing on the most critical aspects of the relationship. Again, be specific. So define each goal with clarity instead of a vague idea like improved communication. Specify how you're going to achieve it, such as have a weekly check-in to discuss feelings and concerns. Um, Set measurable indicators. So determine measurable indicators to track progress. For example, if your goal is to spend more quality time together, 
set a specific number of hours per week or activities per month. Um, again, make sure that realistic expectations are realistic. So ensure that your goals are you know, achievable. Setting unrealistic expectations, again, it can lead to just frustration and disappointment. Um, make sure that there's mutual commitment. So both partners should be equally committed to the goals. Uh, discuss and confirm your dedication to working together towards the shared objectives. Um, and again, you know, just have regular check-ins to assess progress. Discuss any challenges and make adjustments as you need to. And again, this promotes ongoing collaboration and communication. And just be flexible. You know, relationships evolve and your goals should evolve with them. So just be willing to adapt as circumstances change and ensure that your goals remain relevant and meaningful to both of you. And financial, because I, I guess possibly uh, health and financial are two biggies here. So again, you know, setting financial goals, it's essential for create, creating a clear path towards stability, um, you know, economic stability and prosperity. Um, it helps you to prioritize spending, it helps you to save strategically, and it helps you to work towards longer term objectives and, and just gives you a bit more financial security and peace of mind. So, you know, assess your current financial situation. So begin by understanding your current income, expenses and overall financial health. And then this evaluation forms the foundation for setting realistic goals. Um, Define short-term and long-term goals. So differentiate between short-term goals, like uh, maybe saving for a holiday, um, and long-term goals, like uh, retirement planning. And this distinction allows you for more focused planning. Make sure to quantify your goals. So attach specific amounts and timelines to your financial goals. Whether it's saving for an emergency fund or a down payment on something, um, quantifying objectives, it helps you to provide clarity and direction. Create a realistic budget, okay? So develop a budget that aligns with your goals. Um, so this involves allocating funds to various expenses, savings and investments, and ensuring that financial sources, uh, resources are used efficiently. Explore additional income streams. So I know I'm probably preaching to the converted on this call, um, but consider diversifying your income sources to accelerate your goal achievement. So this could involve some side hustles, investments, or other opportunities to boost your financial capacity. Um, establish a timeline. So set specific timelines for achieving each financial goal. So whether they're short term or long term, having a deadline creates a sense of urgency and accountability. Um, regularly review your progress and adjust as needed. So you know, periodically just review your financial goals and adjust them based on your changing circumstances. And this flexibility just ensures that your goals remain relevant, quite honestly. Um, build an emergency fund, you know, prioritise creating the emergency fund equivalent to three to six months worth of living expenses, and that provides you with a financial safety net during unexpected situations. And, you know, you could also, to help with defining your goals, seek professional advice. So, you know, consult with financial advisors um, to get some guidance and they can help tailor your goals to your unique situation and provide insights on investment strategies. Now, uh, I, I don't have a lot of time for financial advisors, if I'm perfectly honest, but you know, it's, it's sort of um, whatever floats your boat. So what I wanna do now is take a little bit of time. Um, we're gonna just take 10 minutes out. So if you wanna go off camera um, or whatever, and I want you to pick an area in which you want to set a goal. I want you to spend the next 10 minutes going into detail about that goal um, and using the SMART criteria, okay? So specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, and time-bound. So um, I'm gonna switch my camera off now and um, I'm gonna leave you guys in peace for 10 minutes to actually sit and um, figure out a goal. And this is just a bit of a practice um, and then if you've got any questions about the goals that you've set, you know, we can, we can cover those towards the end of the, the exercise. So, um, yeah, off you go.
That's the halfway mark, five minutes. Okay, one more minute and then we'll get back on with this.
All right. How did everybody find that? It was good, Richard. Yeah. Does, does anybody on here want to sort of um, share what they've got to, to sort of in the spirit? I understand if not, it's absolutely fine because some some goals will be quite personal. Um, but if anybody does feel like sharing sort of for the benefit of everybody, that would be that would be great. I can share. I'm happy to share. Okay. Yeah. Great. Thanks, Claire. I'm not sure if I've got it all in the right order, but I think I've got it all there. That doesn't matter. Um, <laughs> So for me, um, uh, my thing is I, um, to create the foundations for my home. Uh, mm -hmm. So um, so being uh, specific, um, I want to create foundations for my home with the least impact on the earth. Um, and what it entails is to build up my site with stones create an access site for the septic create a swale to divert water and um do the pricing difference and pros and cons between concrete and piles um so to measure it like i'm going to break down into different tradies um you know what tradies are eh? like tradesmen yeah yeah <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> uh, and get quotes and decide whether I have worms or a drainage field. Mm -hmm. I'm going to use a digger to create all at once to save on expense. So I have all my areas marked out um, and decide in what order I need to do it from scale of one to 10. Okay. Um, so is it achievable? Um, is that the next one? Yeah. yeah. Is it achievable? Um, yeah, it's achievable because I've already made the contacts and um, have talked to the tradies if, to see if they're available to come and do quotes. So to me, it is achievable. And am I being realistic? Um, I can't remember what went with that one. So it should be relevant, actually. I've just realised this slide's wrong as well. It should be relevant. But, I mean, it sounds like it is it's obviously oh, something we're working on so yeah, yeah. um yeah <laughs> it's relevant because it's aligned with my values um of the least impact on the planet the most cost effective way to do it and it will give me my home and my forever home um yeah. and my time timeline for that is three months wow okay you're going to be busy then <laughs> Well, when you, I, what I found with things like setting goals is uh, you save time because you have it in the right order. And then if you can align everything up together, then you can run it one after each other. Yeah. Hopefully. No, that's, <laughs> that's fantastic. That's brilliant. Thanks ever so much, Claire. And that's a great example. Yeah. And wow, that that's, um, <laughs> that's a hell of a goal. Well done. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> So no, that's that is a really great example of a of um, a, a smart goal there um, with all the different elements there. So um, well, let us know how you get on, Claire. There as well, be curious to hear if you uh, if you sort of achieve that in the time that you set as well. That'd be brilliant. Well do. Um, does that, does anybody else want to share um, their goals at all? Hi. Hi, this Amy. Is Amy. <laughs> Hi. Um. This was actually kind of hard for me because, as you know, I'm just coming out of cancer treatment. So I've spent, yeah. I've lost. It's kind of a very strange situation because when you are, when you do, when you when you go through something like cancer, you literally lose your life and your life gets on hold. And so doing this activity, I realized that I have multiple goals to set because I had no goals during that year and a half. I mean, you just, you don't think about goals or anything. You live in the moment. So I kind of sat down and I was like, oh my God, what do I do? What do I do? What do I write? So I think one of the first things for me is a healthier lifestyle, um, which I've already started. So my goal is to maintain a healthier lifestyle through conscious nutrition and exercise to lose weight and I would do that by evaluating what I eat and drink every day checking labels walking or exercising at three times a week and 
basically measuring all of that using a fitness app. Um, I think my game is to reduce refined sugar, which I was doing, but I kind of need to go back to doing. Um, I am already, I have already removed ultra processed foods. Um, I check labels for preservatives and additives and we don't buy anything that includes any of that. Um, and I've kind of started walking, um, maybe not three times a week, but whenever I'm able to. Um, it's relevant because I'm trying to reduce the risk of getting cancer again, but also I want to extend my life because I've got two young boys that I need to look after. And it's timed in terms of I kind of want to see a difference over the next six months in terms of energy levels, uh, weight loss, um, and then pain and inflammation because I'm dealing with lots of side effects and after effects from my cancer treatment. So that's just one of my goals. But I kind of realized that it's something that I need to do to kind of get back into track. I probably need to sit down and do this for everything in my life to kind of get goals back into into my head if that makes any sense no that that makes perfect sense and uh, i mean how, how amazing so, well I, I hope you know really hope you're going to you're in remission and that you're getting better um first off i i would say that also sort of on the measurable side maybe just be a bit more specific about how far you want to walk or how okay. much time you want to spend walking each day you know, if it's half an hour three times a week or you know and and also just you know when you're measuring measure how far you're getting each you know are you getting further with each walk so over that period of time you know that you're you're extending your walks you're managing to go further during that time mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um and obviously yeah you know, when it comes to you saying you want to sort of um you know keep a check on weight and things like that then that's that's easily enough to do but maybe keep some sort of a journal as well um so you you see how you're getting on um with everything and just you know again sort of jur maybe journal this stuff as well and it'll help yeah. you keep track. Oh, yeah, that's that's a good idea. Yeah. Thank you. No, that's great. Thanks, Amy. And thanks for coming on and talking about that. That's wonderful. So Thank you. Really, really well done. So I hope you get on track with everything. And I, I can understand you. I've had family members that have gone through cancer. And, um, yeah, it's the, your focus is just survival, really, isn't it? For, uh, it is, yeah. For so, uh, um, which is a goal in itself, I would say. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. And it's almost like you're learning to kind of get back into life and I realize it's like the baby steps now of having to re-establish goals goals you know things that were kind of you know normal before everything now I kind of have to actively sit down and do it you know um, and I realized that just by doing this activity that it was all so vague I want to do all this stuff but there was no there was nothing specific or real about it so yeah Fantastic. no this was good Good. I'm glad it's glad it's been helpful. Oh, thanks, Amy. Thank you for sharing. Thank you. Um, does anybody else have any goals that they they've sort of set and they want to share? Okay. So what we'll do, we'll we'll just sort of move on. I've got a few more bits that I do want to cover um, before we finish. So um, I want to talk about integrating your goals. So I mean, Amy, actually, this might be relevant for you because you sounds like you've got goals in lots of different areas. Um, and you, you kind of want to find harmony between the financial health relationship goals, um, and that involves kind of aligning those objectives um, to work towards like a, just your, your, your sort of ultimate goals. So, you know, one of the ways of doing that is to identify your core values. So understand what your core values and priorities are in each area, because if you've got multiple goals that you want to pursue um, in different areas, you want to you do want to put those in some sort of an order so you're not getting overwhelmed um but just so you're recognizing what really matters to you and that will guide you through the creation of goals that align with your, your values or what you're trying to achieve um so set holistic objectives as well so develop goals that consider the interconnection between the, the different aspects you know financial health relationship or whatever your different goals are looking to attain um, so, you know, one example of goal could be to prioritize health by engaging in affordable fitness activities, but also strengthen relationships like partner workouts or family walks or something. Um, again, you know, if applicable, 
regularly communicate with partners. So openly communicate with your partner or family members about your individual goals in each area and discuss how these goals can complement and support each other um, and create just a more unified approach to, to well-being. Um, prioritize balance. So avoid excessive focus on one area at the expense of others. So strive for balance by allocating time, um, resources and energy to you know, financial planning, health practices and nurturing relationships in a way that promotes harmony sort of all around. And where possible, create joint goals that encompass you know, financial health and relationship elements. So for example, saving for a family holiday to, um, doesn't only address financial goals, but that is also heading towards like a quality time and bonding goal maybe. Um, build a support system. So surround yourself with a supportive network if you're able to. Um, whether it's friends or family or, or even professionals that you're look going to for help. Um, because having a strong support system can really help you navigate challenges and stay motivated across different areas of your life. Um, try and integrate healthy habits as well. So incorporate habits that benefit multiple areas simultaneously. So for instance, um, regular exercise, it doesn't only promote physical health, but it can also be a shared activity that strengthens relationships and serves as a stress reliever. Um, and you know make sure you review and adjust your goals regularly we've, we've talked about this before but do make sure you periodically assess your goals and how they interact you know life evolves and priorities shift so just regular reviews will allow for you to adjust to um, ensure like the continued alignment with your overall well-being um, and practice mindfulness as well again i'm, I'm assuming i'm probably talking to the preaching to the converted here but you know, be mindful of your choices and how they impact different aspects of your life. Um, mindful decision-making can lead to more intentional actions um, that support the alignment of your different goals. So you know, by taking a more holistic and intentional approach, you can find alignment in your goals, creating more cohesive um, and fulfilling um, life, really, across all different aspects of your well-being. So, it's all well and good setting goals, isn't it? But it can be really, really tough to sort of maintain your focus on them. And, and um, you know, there are lots of different things that, that get in our way when we're trying to um, when we're trying to achieve our goals. And we're going to look at some ways of overcoming these obstacles because there are plenty of them that are there waiting to trip you up. So, um, you know, first of all, um, lack of clarity. So. You know, having unclear or vague goals, it can lead to confusion and lack of direction. So, you know, make sure that your goals are clearly defined. So, you know, use the um, the SMART framework, and this will hopefully provide you with a good roadmap for success. Procrastination is a big one, isn't it? So, you know, postponing tasks or actions, and that can really hinder your progress. So, you know, one strategy is to break down tasks into smaller, more manageable set steps. Um, set deadlines and create a schedule to to build momentum um, and focus on starting rather than waiting for perfect conditions you know imperfect action is is better than perfect inaction okay so it doesn't matter just just get started just do it um, lack of motivation can be an issue so you know and this can revolt um, <laughs> result in a lack of commitment to goals so, you know, one strategy for overcoming this is to be really, really clear on your why. You know, we talked about this at the beginning. So after this, make sure you go and you write down what your why is, because the underlying reasons and benefits for achieving the, the goal um, will help you to stay on track. And, and break again, break your goal into smaller, more achievable milestones and celebrate each success along the way to stay motivated. Um, fear of failure, uh, again, that can be something that uh, it can paralyze you and it can prevent you from taking the necessary actions. So, you know, just embrace failure as part of the learning process and learn to shift your perspective to see failures as opportunities for growth. Um, you know, fail, first attempt in learning, isn't it? That's one of them. Um, and I, I, there's another, um, another one as well that I can't remember. But anyway, focus on what you learn from setbacks and then use them to improve. So overwhelming goals, again, these can be an issue. So goals that are too ambitious or broad, um, they just leave you not even knowing where to start. So, you know, break larger goals into smaller, more manageable tasks, prioritize and tackle one task at a time. And this doesn't only make progress feel more achievable, but it also reduces the feelings of overwhelm. Um, 
lack of accountability okay so with without without accountability it's far far easier to deviate from the plan so make sure to share your goals with friends with family share them on social media you know be held <laughs> accountable by um by people on facebook um you know consider finding an accountability partner to check in with regularly and this external accountability can really help provide motivation and support um distractions so um, external distractions can divert focus from the goal so identify and minimize distractions maybe create a dedicated workspace, um, set specific times for focused work, uh, use tools like timers or productivity apps to help you stay on track. Unrealistic expectations. So again, you know, we've, we've covered this, setting overly ambitious or unrealistic goals can really lead to frustration. So one of the strategies for getting around this is just to set realistic and achievable goals, break them down into small attainable steps and adjust your expectations based on progress and circumstances and celebrate incremental successes. So, you know, you know, that we we're just discussing with Amy, if, if you've had um, health issues, you can't expect to be going full steam ahead on your goals. So, you know, just reflect on what you're doing and, and just alter, alter your goals because otherwise you're just going to frustrate yourself and it's just going to make things worse. Um, a lack of resources can also be an issue. So insufficient resources like time or money or skills um, can impede your progress. So, you know, learn to prioritize resource allocation. Um, look for opportunities to learn new skills like you're doing today on this workshop. Um, find creative solutions to, res to resource constraints and consider adjusting goals based on your available resources. And then this is a big one as well, lack of consistency, okay? Um, because again, being inconsistent can really hinder your long-term progress. So try to establish a routine that incorporates tasks related to your goals regularly. Um, you know, focus on building habits that support your objectives. And consistency is key to sustained success. Now, you know, I've, I've found this, I'm an early bird, okay? Not everybody is, so I'll give you that, but I'm usually awake at half five in the morning. So anything like this that I want to do, that I want to do on a regular basis, I do it before everybody's awake in the house. And, and that's my time. That's my time to focus on my goals and to get anything done that I want to. So, you know, try and find these little pockets in the day when you have a bit of peace and quiet. Maybe you're an, a night owl and that's more you. Um, or, you know, a lot of us have kids at home. So, you know, times when they're maybe they're just tied up doing other stuff. Maybe they're doing some sort of online course or they're just doing whatever kids do and playing. You know, or just tell them you need half an hour just to sit down and do some bits and pieces and, and get a bit of peace and quiet. But anything that can help you maintain that consistency will help. Um, and you know, by recognizing and addressing these obstacles and by having a strategy um, to, to get around all the different problems, you, know, you can actually increase the likelihood of overcoming challenges and successfully achieving your goals. And it's really, really, really important to celebrate um, your milestones okay so because celebrating your achievements doesn't matter how small they are um, it's it reinforces positive behavior uh, it boosts motivation and it contributes to your overall well-being um, so you know positive reinforcement it's celebrating achievements provides this reinforcement it creates a sense of accomplishment and creates a sense of satisfaction so you know acknowledge small milestones in health like uh, completing a week of consistent workouts or choosing regular healthy meals and just recognize that effort um, and it reinforces your commitment to a healthier lifestyle. Um, motivation and momentum. So again, celebrations build momentum and you, they motivate you towards further action. Um, they create a positive cycle of achievement and progress. So in relationships, for example, celebrate moments of effective communication or successfully navigating a challenge together and just recognize efforts to strengthen the bond. And again, this can just foster motivation for continued growth. Um, they enhance well-being. So um, regular celebrations contribute to a more positive mindset. Um, they can reduce stress and they can promote overall well-being. So, for example, a financial achievement like reaching a savings goal, you could celebrate this by treating yourself to just a, a, a small indulgence or planning, you know, an outing that's within your budget. Um, and again, you know, this is just positive reinforcement and it enhances your financial well-being. 
And, you know, celebrating as well, it builds resilience because celebrating your achievements, it doesn't matter how small they are, it helps to build resilience by focusing on the progress rather than the setbacks. Okay, so for example, in health, if you're celebrating consistent hydration or improved sleep patterns, um, you know, all of these help to build resilience and a positive attitude towards ongoing health goals. And strength, they, you know, celebration, it strengthens relationships. So celebrations in relationships, it fosters connection, it fosters appreciation, um, and it can strengthen the emotional bond between partners. So you know, regularly celebrate shared accomplishments like overcoming a challenge or achieving a joint goal. Um, and this strengthens the foundation of the relationship. And there's just some suggestions for some celebrations here for you. So, you know, if, if you're reaching your health goals, you know, organize a small fitness challenge with friends or family or treat yourself to a spa day. I know which one of those two I'd rather have um, or a relaxing bath after reaching a health milestone or just plan some delicious homemade meals to celebrate dietary achievements. Um, again, you know, celebrate your relationship goals. So have a date night or a weekend getaway to celebrate relationship milestones. Um, write each other letters expressing gratitude and celebrate the positive aspects of your relationship or create a memory jar to document and celebrate small moments through the year. And you can look back on these at the end of the year um, and it gives you a real boost. And on the financial side, you know, treat yourself to just a bit of a budget friendly splurge after achieving a savings goal. Um, have a financial check in date where you review and celebrate progress together. Uh, create a vision board of financial goals and celebrate milestones by updating it as you achieve your objectives. Now, these are all great ways just to, to keep yourself focused on what you're doing and why you're doing it. So that, that's nearly it from me. Um, I've got some resources here for you as well. There's some really good books here um, that will help you build good habits, um, that will help you with, um, with your, your goals, you know, achieving goals. And I will make these available. I've got these uh, notes as a handout. So if you want them, um, DM me and, and I will send you a PDF of the notes and these resources but you know atomic habits is a great book i've read that a couple of times it's a really really fantastic book um the seven habits of highly effective people is really highly recommended um breaking the habit of being yourself by joe dispenza i love that book i've read that several times as well and it's all backed up you know the neuroscience of change is all actually backed up by scientific evidence um your best year ever by michael hyatt and The Obstacle is the Way by Ryan Holiday. And again, you know, that's a really great book. Um, it draws from stoicism, actually, but it's, um, it really emphasizes how obstacles can be transformed into opportunities for growth in, in your personal and professional life. So that's a, a really great uh, a book to have a look at. Um, TED Talks, yeah, there's some really good TED Talks out there. The Power of Vulnerability by Brené Brown. Um, the Puzzle of Motivation by Dan Pink and The Happy Secret to Better Work by Sean Anker. So, you know, all, all of these sort of um, look at how you can be inspired to set goals, um, how you can sustain effort towards your goals, and again, how happens leads to success, and, and um, you know, and they give you insights into setting positive and achievable goals. Uh, there's some great YouTube channels as well, so TED Ed, um, again, they've got a variety of lessons on goal setting and motivation and personal development. Uh, Goalcast, um, there, there are motivational videos and interviews with successful individuals. And uh, another great one actually is Project Life Mastery, um, covering topics on self-development, goal setting and achieving success. And then yeah, there are some goal setting apps out there as well if you find that they will actually help you um, maintain, you know, maintain your steps towards your goals. So Todoist uh, is a task management app, um, Headspace is a meditation app, and Strides is a goal and habit tracking app. And I mean, you know, for reminders, I set reminders on my phone daily for the things that I want to achieve every day. I have them as reminders in my phone. And again, it's just great. You can just tick them off as you do them, but I have them set as, as daily reminders for myself. So I just want to sort of finish with a couple of thoughts. So, you know, always focus on your own goals. It doesn't matter what other people are doing. You know, you are, it's not a race, um, okay? It's a marathon, not a sprint. Uh, which is uh, it's cliche, but it's absolutely true. So it doesn't matter what other people are doing, how well they're doing, you are focused on your goals, okay? Because 
looking around at other people, you know, there's a very true saying, comparison is the thief of joy. Um, I, I do absolutely fully believe that. That is absolutely true. And, you know, looking around at other people, you know, the grass isn't always greener. They're probably looking at you as one thinking, wow, he, she's doing really absolutely fantastically well too. So, um, you know, just, just stay in your lane and focus on what you are doing. And it doesn't matter what anybody else is doing. It's, you know, it's none of your business. So I just want to close this down by saying uh, best of luck for a fantastic 2024 and get out there and pursue those goals. So thank you ever so much, everyone, for coming along to this. I really appreciate it. Um, does anybody have any, any questions or anything? Just want to say thanks, Richard. It was just what I needed. Thank you. <laughs> Perfect. You're welcome, Claire. Thank you. Thank you very much. It was really helpful. Oh, no, that's great. Thanks, Amy. Appreciate that. Cheers, everyone. I'm going to stop the recording now and... Um...